So, Chef Alan, now that we know how Alan Wong's got started, how did you guys uh, plan this growth? I mean, you have four restaurants now, and I'm sure you have some plans for the future. How, how did that happen? Well, we opened uh, Alan Wong's on King Street in 1995, actually on, on tax day, April 15th. Can't forget that. Um, we opened the Pineapple Room at, uh, at then Liberty House, now Macy's, in 1999. <clears throat> we opened Japan in 2000. And Hula Lai is now just two years old. What is that? 2003. Are they all kind of similar? Because to concept out an entirely different restaurant and then continually open them one year apart would be pretty hard, wouldn't it? Well, what uh, you know, what's very important is have a plan. You have to, uh, you know, people are going to ask you, "What do you want? Okay, what do you what do you see yourself doing ten years from now? Five years? What's your short, midterm, and long range goals?" So we came up with a five-year plan at that time, and the plan at that time was it wasn't necessarily one every year for five years. Uh, the plan was after five years that we would have five entities. And we pretty much accomplished that. You know, we had the, the five, and we had uh, Aloha Airlines. We consulted for Aloha Airlines for a little while. So we did have the five things going on for a while. We did accomplish that. You know, I, I b- really believe that uh, you got to take a step back once in a while. you got to dream. you got to do the visionary thing. You got to write it down. You got to plan, and you got to set it to a timetable, and that's how you accomplish your goals. So you know you start with that, and you, then you got to go with the flow. Some things don't happen. Sometimes it does, and and, and kind of like eventually make it make it to the to the finish line. And it's always different from what you plan, but at least you had a plan. What was the most challenging thing about opening up those restaurants in that time period? And then how did you guys overcome that? Well, your normal growing pains. You know, in the very first weeks, the first months, you know, you're you're like uh, working uh, 16 hours a day, 20 hours a day. When uh, one employee quits, it, it really like cripples you almost until you can, you know, build up and uh, finally realize that uh, you need to hire a bunch of part-timers. Maybe you need to hire a bunch of students so that if one guy quits, at least somebody can at least step in. So, you know, we open up with a real tight budget, really tight crew. Uh, we open with 25 employees. We're forecasting only like 60 people a night for the first two weeks. You know, we open on April 15th. Usually April is a slow month in the year. We open on a Monday. On our first Saturday, we got blown out of the water. You know, you're forecasting 60. We did 150. By like 6.30, I was calling my friends around town for fish, like five pounds of mahi mahi from him, you know, five pounds of opaka opaka from this guy. I sent my dishwashers all over town. I made it, but... Ever since that first Saturday, it's been really busy for us, been really fortunate. And we grew from 25 employees in the beginning to 50 in like three quarters of a year. Well, you know, that's growing pains because you ha- you're, you start small. And because of these problems, you have to grow a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And that's what I would recommend for, for businesses, restaurant businesses. You know, start small first. Do, do something well. Grow a little bit in time. Even though you create problems, they may be good problems. You have to grow. So that's a good problem versus, you know, uh, building up this grand thing and staffing it grandly. And then where's the business? Then you realize you got to cut staff. You know, that's that's not the I did that and I had a big mistake. And I, I learned from that, too. You always seem to have wanted more and learn more education, you know, taking classes. This person that invested in you, he had an entrepreneur background. Francis Higa. Yes. He started Zippy. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, uh-huh. so was he like a mentor to you then? Um, no mentor, no. He was. Uh, he gave me some very good advice. You know, he was the one that took a chance on me, basically. And every once in a while, I'd pop into his office, and he'd say something very profound, and I would think about it, and he says, "Yeah, the guy's right." You know, well, after all, he's been in business for so long, and you know, Zippy's is uh, is is an icon in Hawaii now. Right. So when did you start getting involved with all these community events, and then? being involved with, you know, so many different community organizations? Actually, um, after like a couple of years in business, I I, um, I read an article in the newspaper. You know, we're in Makali, Mo'ili'ili area, and it was about the, the senior citizens. And I read a story about a lady who uh, was living on her Social Security check and whatever she had. So it showed her revenue and it showed her expenses, and she was minus. And <laughs> I thought, wow, poor thing, you know? We're in the business of food. You know, that was our district, Mo'ili'ili. So we called the Mo'ili'ili Senior Citizens uh, Center, 
And we started, uh, you know, real simple. Maybe a pot of beef stew and rice, and we would go down one Sunday a month and go down there and feed the, the really needy senior citizens. Because some of them can't drive. you got to go pick them up. And some of them, you got to bring food too. So I asked to um, have them select the very needy, the ones that you have to pick up and the ones that can't get around so easy, and, and I wanted to feed them. So eventually that moved to, uh, from the, the Senior Citizen Center, I, I said, let's bring them to the restaurant. Let's give them a treat. You know, and, you know, it's kind of kind of warms your heart when you when you hear that they get dressed up for the occasion and they, they wait once a month to come to the restaurant for this this lunch that we make for them. And, uh, you know, it's not really elaborate because, you know, they cannot eat rich things. They cannot eat really, you know, things with butter. You know, they don't eat a lot of spicy things. You got to watch your salt. You can't make, you got to make them kind of like soft. But it's the occasion. It's the the spirit in which it's intended. They get to get together. It's really cute. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.